Hello, Guru Nation. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, this is not going to be for the podcast. This is just for YouTube, just for Facebook. Uh, if it's short enough, just for LinkedIn. But we might go just a little longer what LinkedIn allows. So we'll have the links on LinkedIn. But this is a visual we're going to be sharing because I got a question the other day, Monica. And I know you teach this in the CRC Academy. You at least teach it during the internship part, maybe during the regular part too. You talk about it. It's creating source documents. And somebody yes. asked, you know, somebody who watches avidly, an avid watcher, um, says, you know what? You never done anything on how to make a source document. You've talked about it, but you didn't show us anything. So who better to bring on than the director of the CRC Academy, the co founder? And the instructor, Monica Quitiva, to come on and explain, give you like a little preview in this 10 to 12 minutes of what you can expect if you take the class. But if it's just source documents that you want to learn how to create, this video is all you need for that because she's going to show you everything. So let me make you the host, Monica. Thank and you. then you can share your screen. Okay. There you go. Take it all yours, Monica, and I'll I'll <laughs> add some color commentary as you're you know showing. All right. Sharing. <clears throat> all right. So, to begin with, the most important thing that you should be doing is reading truly the protocol, and uh, so from back to back because you need to know all the details. You need to make sure you write down or highlight all the um, footnotes, which are really, really important because those are the ones that give you the details that you need. So basically, go to the schedule of assessments first. Get to the yeah. protocol. We don't have an actual protocol to show you, but uh, go to the protocol. Go to the schedule of assessments. It's in every protocol. And what Monica is saying is don't ignore the footnotes on those schedule of assessments because those are oftentimes the most important part of it. Yeah, because those little footnotes are the ones that tell you in the order that you should be doing these assessments. Uh, like, for example, let's say some, some schedule of assessments, have, you have to do, it says that you have to perform the EKE. But then in the schedule of events, it has some, most of the time like little letters uh, that you have to go and look in the footnotes. So, for example, it says in the screening visit that in the screening visit you should be performing um, like a triplicate EKG, and then the rest of the visits after that is going to be only one EKG. If you don't read that, you will not know uh, that specific uh, detail. Uh, for example, another 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 example could be uh, let's say that says. Uh, the EKG and the vitals should be performed before the blood uh, sample. Um, that, that could be something that it could say there. Or let's say the vitals should be done in uh, like a, a, um, supination, sitting, and standing. Um, it could also say the supination for five minutes. Uh, sitting for three minutes and then standing for one minute. So all those little details are in those footnotes. If you don't read it, then you miss it. And then your um, source documents will miss important information. Okay. So this is, it's very important that you take a look of those little details. Uh, then the other, other, so besides reading truly the protocol, besides having, uh, I mean, understanding all the, the schedule of events and taking a look and highlighting these footnotes, uh, another, another thing that you could use are, is the, um, so the EDC. Okay. So the EDC will this tell you also that. Big tip, guys. Big tip. And by the way, guys, if you don't have access to your EDC yet when they ask you to make source documents, you need to ask your monitor can I have screenshots of the EDC? Matter of fact, if you want to look really good, okay, uh, in front of your CRA for the site selection visit, what you want to tell the monitor when they ask you about source documents and how you create them, 
you can tell them, do we, can we get access to the EDC screenshots so we can make the source documents? And uh, they usually say yes. So if you don't have the access to the actual EDC, ask for screenshots of the source. Exactly. And then what this uh, EDC source, could, uh, I mean, information can tell you. The information that they want us to collect to begin with per visit. Additionally, also formats. For example, uh, in this case, they want the day, uh, the day, two digits, then the month, the three initial letters, and then the year, the uh, four digits. Okay. Or, for example, let's say, um, besides that, like, uh, let's say in the physical examination, it can tell you the, 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 the type of information they want, like for example, if they want it in uh, pounds or kilograms, if they want uh, tympanic um, temperature, if they want oral temperature, and, and then if they want it in, centigrade, uh, in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So all that little information that sometimes we just, um, you know, the overlook, is, 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 is just there in the EDC, the uh, schedule of events, and obviously the, the, in the protocol. And, and another tip that I can give your source document completed, you can always send it to your CRA, to the monitor for a review. They can give you their feedback or, or the suggested feedback because they cannot tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> Yeah, but they can give you feedback about it, and usually that feedback is super, super helpful. So, well, this someone might say, <laughs> Monica, how did you even create this? Like, what did you use uh, Microsoft Word, or how did you make this? Oh, I use Microsoft Word. Yeah, so this is an example of a source document that we created uh, for. Uh, this is for the CRC Academy. So um, you you so created just, this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we follow all all the the assessments uh, in the same order as the protocol required, and uh, and and obviously you have to remember that each state have different rules and regulations in regards to some assessments. Like for example, the form of consent form. Like in California, we have to add the California Bill of Rights. So that's something that we have to add to our source document, uh, especially in the screen embassy. Mm -hmm. And so those are things that we have to have in mind. And, and, and something else is that if you have any questions about the protocol, if you're not sure about some assessment or anything in any visit, never, ever assume, never. Always ask your monitor. And um, another, oh, another, another tip is that, and actually uh, Dan teach me that a uh, long time ago, <laughs> that you should never leave anything empty. Like if you don't have information, oh, yeah. always either cross a line or put none or non-applicable, but never, never uh, leave any, any area empty yeah. when you're completing or That's documenting true. anything. That's the last C of Alcoa-C or Alcoac exactly. is complete. And if, if you leave something empty, the FDA is going to assume it wasn't done. They're not going to assume in your favor, you know, that you didn't have to do it. They're going to assume it wasn't done. So you got to cross through it like with a pen or put NA or put no, not done. And look, all this stuff Monica's growing through is just one visit. Okay. It's yeah. 4 of 14 for a screening visit. So these source mm -hmm. documents they're lengthy right and um you got to make sure everything's in there that's why you can't do it really without the protocol and you can't do it without the edc in my opinion the screenshots yeah oh another thing that you also have to i mean i recommend that you put it in the source document is uh, the reminders because sometimes there are things that you should be reminding your patients in every single visit or the subjects. Like, for example, let's say this study prohibits the patients to be drinking uh, grape juice. So that's something that you want to remind your patients every time 
this is kind of educating them because you don't want them to be exposed to any risk. So that's something that you that I recommend you to add to every single uh, source document. And, um, and also, let me see. Oh, and also after the assessments, uh, you should put this when it says completed by. So yeah. whoever that complete that has the name and the initials and uh, initials and, and date or signature and date, whatever is the so piece for your site. That's the attributable and the contemporaneous from Alcoa. All of this has to take Alcoa-C into consideration as well. And the order, right? The order that things need to be done is uh, important too because the way you created this is in order. Yes, it's in order, and and like like as you can see in this example, uh, we put the notes that are referring to the footnotes, so that way it sets a reminder for you. Like for example, in this case, blood pressure will be measured using a calibrated automatic blood pressure cuff after the subject has been seen at least uh, five minutes. The automatic blood pressure cuff will also provide pulse rate measurement. So mm -hmm. in this case, they want this to be uh, with the 24 hours clock, the timing. Okay, so that's why it was put this way. Mm -hmm. the, this, this was the, the format that they wanted. And, and also the height in inches, the weight in, uh, uh, it, it was either or kilograms or pounds mm -hmm. um so again uh it's, it's very important that's why it's so important to read the whole protocol and and if you don't find these little details uh in the protocol then you will find it in the edc so you yep. have the, these three parts protocol schedule of events and uh, it is easy to compare mm -hmm. and, and create good source documents all right. Well, you see, guys, that's uh, how you create a source document. It's typically when you do it, you're going to start with a screening visit like Monica is showing you here. But of course, there's more. Usually there's more than just one visit in a study. You're going to have to create a source for every single visit for that study. Mm. How long does it take to create, let's say, a screening visit source? How long did it take you to well, create that's, this? That's actually, uh, uh, I mean, it takes <laughs> a lot of time. So it be, 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 I mean, in between reading the protocol, understanding everything, highlighting it, mm -hmm. and then I start writing this, I will say that probably four hours. Okay. But, I mean, creating good source documents. But the good thing about doing this is it forces you to learn the protocol, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the highlight. You totally mm -hmm. understand, learn the protocol and you will know exactly what you do in the first visit. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, it's a, it's a task that, that you only have to do it once per study. Yeah. Unless the study has any amendment and you have to change something, but you don't have to create the whole protocol. You just make the adjustments. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Anything else we're missing out? We're leaving um, out? No, I think that that should be all. Uh, mm, no, yeah. All right. I think that's that's pretty much everything. Well, so. that's how you create a source document, guys and gals. And uh, if you're running a site, this is actually something you can give to someone you're training to be a coordinator as a task. It's like, hey, we have this new study, create the screening visit source. Obviously, if it's a new hire, you're going to look it over to make sure they did it right. But it's a great way for them to get trained on the new study. And it's a great way for you to learn how to supervise properly, too. And this part here, you see the progress notes? Guys, I just did a video yeah. earlier today on progress notes. You got to write something there. You can just put nothing. Okay. You have to write something. And matter of fact, multiple people can write on this as long as they're yeah. all, they're all signing their own writing signing and dating yeah and remember that this this protocol this source document is the one that is telling the whole story is the one that is painting the picture of the visit so you want to document things properly and um i i actually forgot to mention like for example in the inclusion and ex in the in the um 
screening visit and the uh, randomized uh, uh, randomization visit, you have to add also the inclusion and exclusion criteria just to confirm if the patient uh, screen fell or if the patient is enrolled in the study. Yes, very good that you brought that up. It's literally copied and pasted from the protocol, yeah. the inclusion and exclusion criteria at both the screening and the baseline visit to make sure that they are appropriate for randomization into the study. <clears throat> yeah, so you, all you need to add is this little uh, area where it says yes, no, and not applicable. Mm -hmm. So which means the patient uh, uh, actually met the, the inclusion criteria mm -hmm. or not, and the same thing with the exclusion criteria. Or if it's not applicable, like for example, in the case of males, if they if they had a pregnancy test, so that's if it's a if it's a male, then you're going to put not applicable. Yeah. Um, so I think that should be all. Um, and obviously this part, if the patient is the is screen failure status, but that's only for a screening and uh, and randomization visit. Mm -hmm. In the case the patient got randomized. Yeah, very good. Hopefully so this it. helps somebody out. I know it should be. I wish when I started, I wish I had this video uh, to walk me through this. We had to learn on our own with nobody else to help us. So you guys are spoiled, okay? Um, but thank you, Monica, for coming on. And thank you, everybody, thank for watching. You. If you have any questions, let us know. And again, this is just like a small, small glimpse into the CRC Academy, which is three months of hour-long lectures like this for a Monica. So thank you very much again, Monica. And uh, everybody, well, thank, you, uh, thank you very much. Leave a comment or a like and subscribe and catch you all later.